Hi everyone, welcome to Gallery 500's Emerging Artist Series. This time we're switching it up a little bit and instead of talking to a new up and coming artist, we're gonna to talk to an established career artist, uh, Bo Wild. Well, okay. thank you for sitting down with us. My pleasure. Um, I had fun doing some research to come up with all these questions, so I'm excited to get into it a little bit. We're in Bo Wild's studio, so enjoy. Okay, Bo, let's start with the basics. Okay. Where are you from and what brought you to Port Orange? I'm actually a Floridian, and I grew up here in Daytona Beach, went to Seabreeze, and then I went off to Boston for um, college at Tufts University and studied occupational therapy. And while I was doing that, I was also painting. And then I went on to the museum school of the Museum of Fine Arts, wow. which uh, back in the 80s about. And then I finally came back because I couldn't tolerate the cold weather <laughs> in Boston any longer. So. so your degree in occupational therapy, mm -hmm. how do you think that affects or influences your art? I think it does um, because I was an occupational therapist for so many years, but I was also a painter during that time as well. They seem to connect with each other. In other words, as an occupational therapist, I had to observe uh, people, listen to them, find out what, what was going on, what would be a good solution. And with painting, it is you basically do the same thing, which is as you paint, you create uh, what the problem is and then what the solutions might be and observing people, which I love to do yeah. and have done a lot of cafe se uh, series because that is how I observe people doing whatever they do and try to figure out what the dialogue is. So your surroundings influence your work. Um, like I said, we're in your studio. It's super serene, beautiful view. Um, how does all of that affect your work and the work you do? Well, interestingly enough, it does not. Oh, it does not. And the reason is I paint from an interior space, not what I am looking at. I rarely paint something that's right in front of me. Now, as a young artist, I did, of mm -hmm. course, but now I only paint what's coming into me. And as I paint, what's coming out? How long did it take you to realize that and paint more inwardly? Hmm. Well, I've been painting for 70 years. Wow. Okay. And for a lot of those years, I did very realistic landscapes and seascapes and cafe scenes and all of that. So I would have to say that only until I started doing abstract painting, which truly comes from the interior, did I really start doing that? So I've only been doing that for probably 15 years. Wow. So yeah, big uh, difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always say abstract art is one of the more difficult subjects or styles because an artist has to be so intuitive and um, aware of themselves mm. and how to express that. I right. myself do not... Um, that's not my strong suit, so. yeah. <laughs> but I always commend you in being able to do that. Um, I know practice is really important to of you. Yeah. So what kind of things do you do to continue to practice and to grow as an artist? Uh, practice just means paint every day and paint every day for many hours every day. Mm -hmm. um, what I find is in abstract work, it is the most honest work because you are forced to really create something from that's interior. Yeah. It is not, uh, say, a landscape or boats or whatever that you see from outside. Then you're not really putting yourself out there. You have quite a few accomplishments in your life and in your artistic career. Mm -hmm. um, recently, in the past several years, you were inducted to the National Association of Women Artists, similar to famed artists like Mary Cassatt, Faith Ringgold. Um, that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. Judy Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> um, what would you say your biggest accomplishment in your art career has been? I think probably the retrospective. 
which went over, which just ended at the Orman Museum and went over 40 years Amazing. of work. Um, prior to uh, about 1980, I had a house fire mm. and I was very prolific at that time as well. And all of my paintings prior to the early, like uh, late 1978 wow. were gone. I had no and, idea. Mm -hmm. So I only have work either as a young child, and I do have maybe a dozen of those mm -hmm. uh, pieces, or um, work that was after 1980. Wow. And so the retrospective was only went back to 1980. So the retrospective was quite profound. Uh, and you weren't afraid to kind of make a statement and to note some things, some social commentary. What made you do that and why? Good question. <laughs> um, I think uh, many people feel strongly about social and political issues. However, it's a frightening thing to really express how you feel. Uh, so it, it's uh, tempting not to do that. However, I think if you're going to be honest, and I think if you're going to be a good artist, then you have to be honest. Then you have to be honest about those things as well. I think it's important for an artist to have that voice when you're on the platform mm -hmm. of so many people seeing it. Mm -hmm. At least that's the hope for an artist, right? Yes, so use definitely. that platform wisely. Yes, yes. Um, so kind of on the same train, I'm fascinated with the pseudoname phenomenon, <laughs> especially with female artists. Sure. So tell me about Bo and Betty. Okay. Well, I was born, uh, Betty and <clears throat> back on, because I have been submitting slides for shows for decades back in the early nineties, I submitted some slides and they weren't accepted for the show whatever it was. But I was told later that they wanted more men because they had too many women artists. And especially down here in Florida, we have a lot of women artists. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I would just change my name from Betty to Bo, spell it in the masculine form. And then people don't know, they can't judge my work based on whether what the gender is. And I'm fascinated that that was in the 90s oh, yeah. and not prior because I know a lot of artists did it in 60s and 70s and oh, so on. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's crazy that we still had to deal with that in the 90s. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm sh still today. Yes. It's still a male dominated and back field. Then, absolutely. And back mm -hmm. then women would use their initial. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you saw that, then you knew it was a woman who was yep. trying to change the image. Yep. So. Um, so you've kind of been a trailblazer for female artists, especially here locally. Mm. Uh, you are one of the early members of the Beaux Arts Group of Central Florida. Um, I know yeah. you had a studio space in Daytona Beach with a few other female artists. Yes. What was it like painting in Daytona Beach in the eighties and nineties? <laughs> well, we were lucky enough to get uh, the empty spaces along Main Street because the bikers would come only during Bike Week in February. And the owners of the building could actually pay all of their expenses for the entire year with that, with the bike week income. So uh, we approached them and asked if we could possibly put in some studios and galleries along Beach, uh, sorry, along <laughs> Main Street. And they agreed. We just had to pay the utilities and that was it. And so we had maybe five or six galleries and studios along Main Street. What other artists were you painting with at that time? Anyone we would know? Um, well, I was painting with Barbara Betts, Janet Rogers, who's a very well-known watercolorist in Ormond. And gosh, I can't remember who the fourth person was. I think Kate Harrington. Uh, and the four of us had one building. Then Beaux Arts had a gallery there on the corner. Um, so there were probably 35, maybe 40 artists there. Wow. Um, Barbara um, Parati had a studio with a couple other artists on the other side of the street. And there were some other artists that came in and took over some spaces. So it was really quite fun. It was wonderful. We had like our own little community of artists there. And you just named all female artists as well, which I of love. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let me talk a little bit more about your process. Mm -hmm. 
how do you start a painting? What do you do? And when do you know it's finished? Okay. Or do you ever know it's finished? Yes, I always know it's finished. Um, if I'm doing non-objective abstract, which is all about line and shape and color and texture, it doesn't have an image in it in, originally, mm -hmm. then I just begin by putting paint and lines on the canvas. I always pick my palette first so that I don't have to deal with the problem that some color didn't work. So I always have my palette first, then I go and put stuff on. If an image starts appearing in this abstract, then I might choose to keep it and enhance it, especially a figure, and it frequently is figures. Uh, then I would paint the negative shape around the figure to pull the figure out. Um, if I decide I don't want the figure, then I would go back in. I might turn the canvas upside down so that the figure doesn't show up for me. Um, and when it's done, it's because there's nothing more I want to do to it. But interestingly enough, when it is done and there's no more painting to be done, I will sit in a chair looking at it and I write down words that come to mind that this painting evokes to me and I figure out what the title is going to be based on that. I love that. I was going to want, I wondered how you came up with your titles. Yes. <laughs> and so that's the very last thing I do with a painting and, and then I'll photograph it and seal it and it's done. Um, it might be a rough estimate, but do you know how many paintings you have completed in your lifetime? I couldn't even guess. <laughs> you know. I'm amazed because I have images on my computer of, of paintings that go back, or I might have slides that go way back into the 60s, maybe 70s. And there are hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm sure there are a few thousands. Thousand. I would say thousands. Yeah. 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 Um, inspiration. What inspires you? My emotion. That's all. Yeah. Whatever's going on. Uh, if I'm sad, I don't paint, paint sad. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. But I allow whatever is happening whether it's in my life or in the in the universe or on the on the canvas to dictate what's going on what I'm going to paint so typically in this series we talk to emerging up-and-coming artists mm -hmm. um, but with this time I wanted to separate and feature an established artist um, and I wanted to highlight um, artists in this exhibition that we're featuring at gallery 500 um, artists at various levels in their career, and that's separate from age. You could be mm -hmm. at different points in your career depending on um, age if you're just starting out or if you're older and you're just starting to find your passion for art. Right. Um, as our established artist, you've been doing this your whole life, mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give to a younger or newer emerging artist? Well, first, I would say that you need to paint or create all the time. That you should do it every day, whether it's just sketching or painting or whatever it is, whatever your medium is, you need to do it every day. The second thing would be, don't make it perfect. Make it honest. If it's perfect, might as well take a photograph of it if, if it's a painting. Um, whereas if, uh, if it's imperfect, it more likely will be an honest expression of yourself. So those, those are the two things I'd say. Um, speaking of advice, uh, Gallery 500 is hosting you for mm -hmm. a Tea with Bo on November 19th. Yeah. Uh, tell me more about this event. What can people expect? Well, I'm really excited because it's just going to be a relaxing conversation between artists, um, many of them who are just starting out and um, have a lot of questions. And um, so I'm hoping that it's, it's going to be a wonderful uh, exchange of ideas. I'm excited for it as well. 
um, so many people come into the gallery uh, and want advice about showing in galleries or, you know, critiques on their work and things like that. Um, and so I think you've taken into practice of always teaching, but mm -hmm. also always educating and getting educated. Right. Um, and so I think this tea with Bo will be great in that it's not just about method, but about practice. What have you done? Um, and hopefully inspire people that they mm -hmm. can do it too, right? This is a career. Yes. This can be a life yes. goal. This can be something yeah. that you do. A lot of uh, people have come up to me and say, uh, how do I get where you are now? And a lot of them will say, I don't know what to do next or how do I get into galleries or should I get into galleries, you know, mm -hmm. um, or, and so there's a lot of interesting ideas. Yeah. Um, so any final thoughts? What else do you think needs to be said? <laughs> Just keep painting. I don't know. <laughs> I love to paint. Uh, and unfortunately I am, I paint all the time. So I have a lot of, inventory uh, but um, just have to go with your passion that's all